1748, young George Washington leaves his mark on a cave wall. Young George had just crossed the Shenandoah at what is today Anne Lewis Road. March 13th, 14th, and 15th were plagued by rains as Washington and his team surveyed lands of William Fairfax in the area of Long Marsh, it began raining harder, and they sought shelter. In July 1958, geologist William Davies, in researching a technical volume for the state on caverns of West Virginia, entered a cave about five miles northwest of the Long Marsh area. He mapped it out inside as a complex cave that had been used for ceremonies, according to Freemason tradition, and was called George Washington's Masonic Cave. On one wall, Davies photographed a still legible inscription into the hard stone that said, G. Washington, 1748. The Washingtons had arrived. Now, after young George surveyed the area in 1748, the family, five of his siblings, two half-brothers and three full brothers, acquired by money or inheritance about 10,000 acres of the best lands across the southern third of the county. Brothers Samuel built Harewood in 1770, and Charles came in 1780, founded Charlestown, and built Happy Retreat. John Augustine, George's third full brother, never lived here, but his descendants became the Mount Vernon line, and the last three family members to own Mount Vernon had their personal home here, called Blakely, from 1820 and through all of the Civil War. Initially, George himself, not expecting to soon own Mount Vernon, bought land here and seemed to be weighing a life in Jefferson County. But the unexpected death in 1752 of his older half-brother Lawrence from tuberculosis, a family scourged to this day, his daughter Sarah died in 1754, then an arrangement between Lawrence's remarried widow positioned George to own Mount Vernon in a few more years. Later, in the 1840s and 50s, Mount Vernon was falling apart, and Mount Vernon's longtime owner, Jane Charlotte Blackburn Washington, the mother of American historic preservation, spurred the successful effort to save Mount Vernon for all of us to visit and enjoy today an effort that was finalized by her son, John Augustine Washington, in 1858. Family members remember her fondly as Grandma Jane. 